A moment of relief, as someone was brought out alive. A rescuer who was lucky to escape the horror below ground. All day at the mine, an agonizing vigil. Many relatives waited in torment and in vain for their loved ones to be found. Overnight, some walking wounded emerged, survivors of an explosion and a fire that turned the mine into a burial ground. The government says it passed regular safety inspections, most recently in March. This was a glimpse of the perilous rescue effort below ground, a struggle against lethal fumes that claimed many lives. At the hospital, the desperation grew by the hour. There was a real sense of a community losing hope for many of its sons. We found Gulten Kavaz in the hospital grounds, clutching a photograph of her missing husband, Ali. She encouraged him to start mining because the benefits were good. He was just four days on the job. Please don't leave your children, she says. Everyone is waiting for you to return. I beg you, please come back. Don't leave me alone. Just outside, protesters directed their anger at the police chief. They blamed the mining company and the government for the loss of so many lives. Well, the anger here has spilled over onto the streets. These protesters have been demanding the resignation of the Prime Minister. They say he's a murderer. They are asking who will be held to account for the hundreds of people who have died in this tragedy. This is a mining town, and many here believe the disaster was man-made. This former coal miner, Murat Ozkan, has lost several friends. He told us safety inspections should have been done without warning, but were always known about in advance. The Prime Minister, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, came to the mine as the death toll mounted. But during his visit, his car was attacked by locals. Many here accuse him and his government of ignoring safety problems and having blood on their hands at the scene another body was recovered another victim of a disaster that some had warned was waiting to happen Orlegiran BBC News Soma 